Um, I did last year uh, a buff on uh, DB Comfort Common, which is a really a Debian native tool. Uh, actually, I got an, uh, for me, extremely good response. It was my first buff to attend at the DevConf while I was giving it. So I really decided to do that again t this year. Uh, I hope I will be talking a lot less than last year because I want feedback from uh, all of you. Um, but quickly, um, so what is this talk or this buff about? Um, I quickly go through the important uh, changes that I implemented last year in DBConf with Common. Um, I hope that you can share some of the uh, use cases that you see have problems, great stories, bad stories. Uh, uh, I'd like to know. And uh, I hope that we can have a look at the database policy. Uh, actually, my the, 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 the person that created DBConf with Common, uh, Sheen Finnery, uh, created a policy on packages that need a database already, well, 12 years ago or so. Um, and I'm wondering if we want to do anything with that document, which is still draft. Uh, we could take it up. And actually, I think the question was raised last year if actually packages should be requiring dbconf common in policy uh, in general. So I'd like to have an opinion on that if I should try to take that further. So the last changes since last year. Actually, the uh, I find the most important one, it took a while to, uh, to get my head around to properly implement it, is the introduction of uh, multiple of other packages uh, that are called after the database type that they're using. And the idea is that packages that only need the, or only support the MySQL database, for instance, MariaDB database, <laughs> um, only need to depend on that package and that will pull in the clients. Because in the old case, uh, dbconf common had the problem that you as a package maintainer needed to uh, depend or uh, recommend the client yourself, which you would not need in your package, but you would only need it for dbconf common. Now, the second great thing I think that a lot of people liked about introducing this is that you, as a system administrator, now also have a way out of by installing dbconf no thanks to say, I don't want help. Already by installing the package, you don't get any deep uh, devconf questions. Ask questions right away because it's a bomb or yes, please. Let's wait for Mike. Yeah. <laughs> so is it Oh sorry, just a okay. so if you use DB config dot it needs to be green. Okay. Okay, if if you use DB config no thanks, does this apply to all packages on the system that use DB config common? So there's no yes. way of saying yes. dbconfig common no thanks for A, but dbconfig common no thanks for B. Yes, if, if you want to opt out on some packages, but not on all, you will have to go through a via configuration. But you can precede that since last year. Okay. <laughs> so that was in last year's talk that you could precede dbconfig common, which was not working very well before. So this is global. Yeah. The other one, you can still precede. So that should be fixed. Um, another uh, great improvement, I think, for, for most people, so not the advanced user, but most uh, average users, is that the local setups, local host setups have improved. So for uh, Postgres, um, MySQL, and MariaDB, as well as uh, SQLite, so actually all the databases that are supported by dbconf common on the normal local host, you don't actually need a password. So if dbconfig common can figure out that you don't need it, it will not ask. Uh, because uh, lots of bugs were coming in that the administrator just typed in the wrong password because he never set the password for root, for instance. Um, that the questions that get asked uh, have been improved, uh, especially in the error handling area such to make it more clear what the, in case of an error, what the operator or the administrator should expect from the package, such that you get a better choice. Uh, all error handling, you can either say, um, ignore all errors, it will just continue, and the package has installed successfully, 
Well, obviously it hasn't, but for uh, DPKJ, uh, it just ignores all errors. You can say abort and then actually the installation failed, which is, I think, the default if you're running in interactive mode and it's ignore is the default if you run in non-interactive mode, such that you can just continue. Um, the other two options are to try again. Maybe in the background you fix something and retrying is just the right option or the ignore. Uh, try again, but ask also all the questions again and then you actually get additional questions and that's made more clear in the templates. Um, further improvements, of course, are still welcome, but I also reviewed this with uh, uh, the English uh, an internationalization team. So it should be proper English already, but we can always improve. Um, dbconfig common is uh, written in shell, and uh, actually the error handling was relying on set minus e, uh, which means that if an error occurs, the, the, the script just builds out. Uh, it turns out that there's quite a, some packages that use the statement if uh, dbconfig go and then some error handling of its own, that kills off set minus e. So the whole error handling in dbconfig common was broken if you did this in your package. So I've requested all packages that do this to not do it anymore, but I also fixed dbconfig common to not fail on that. It just meant that in, I think, 40, 60, 100 lines, I had to add or return dollar question mark, which is extremely stupid, but shell. Um, apparently, some backups can be huge and people don't like them if they're upgrading, so you should now get a question if you want to do that. And uh, I uh, extended the uh, auto package test uh, quite a bit. Uh, it tests now both uh, low level with uh, all shells that support what I need to support via the policy. Uh, and as well as I install, upgrade, remove, purge things, all that of all the example packages that are included in dbconf common. Actually, this already caught real bugs in the MySQL upload in Ubuntu, causing them to fix the bug instead of releasing the bug. So that was great for auto testing. So, now I really like to hear your ideas, user stories, or whatever. Um, I made a, where is it? I'm on Gobi in uh, Debcom 16 BOF, dbconfig common, if people like to put stuff there or take notes. So what are things that are going well, are not going well, need to be improved? Um, as I already showed on the slide, I have well, basically two ideas of question of uh, do we need to support more uh, databases? Uh, you already said that last year. I have not come around to actually implement it, but uh, MongoDB is on my list. But are there more? Uh, hmm? No. Yeah, so, uh, hello? I didn't touch anything. Hello, okay. So, uh, for supporting the DB, it doesn't have to handle the creation, backups, and so on. What I care the most about is that it at least asks me the questions so that I can reuse the internationalized templates of DevConf from dbconfig. For example, for MongoDB, if you just ask what the host name is, that, then that's enough for me. So do you mean MongoDB I mean, is it's, more... It doesn't matter so much to me if you handle creation and deletion and lifecycle management of a database. What really is important is to be able to uh, just ask the questions. But if I would do that, doesn't it uh, make sense? If you sense do everything, that's, that's even better. But it's more urgent to at least have the possibility to ask, ask the questions, which is very easy to do, right? It's uh, just... 
Well, yeah. then th th the point is that a big part of dbconfig common doesn't know what database it's asking the question for at that moment. So I would need to check that in the case of MongoDB, it's not doing all kind of logic that it normally does. Uh, Um. So, any other databases that are uh, on request? If not, but if you encounter one, just please let me know. I mean, the bug tracker is open also for wishlist items, and uh, I do handle them, although I'm about to get there, really. Um, well, Zico and I already talked, so we, I know his request for the handling of the, what was that, DSN thing, and I'll look into the script that you already have on that front. Try if I can. You're welcome. Okay, so w one of the features I would, I already use myself is that my package needs to read and write uh, DSN, so it has login, password, host, into that fancy. Uh, can you just type a DSN example so that everybody knows what it is? Um. And then, uh, so I wrote the parser in shell script for myself, and I'm sure others would uh, use it. So it'd be nice if we could just share it together. Oh, that's my software. Okay. So you want to show? Something of this, you mean? Yeah, or? you can search from DBC and those something. This is a good example. No, no, that's above. Again, above, above. No, it's not at the end of the file. You want me to search for it? Yeah. Okay, so are there other points? success stories that people have with using it or walking into issues with uh, the handling that it actually does? Are your users satisfied with how dbconfig common handles uh, the stuff? Yeah, so that little bit of shell scripts uh, I include them on my packages that need to be config common. And it passes the configuration file, ask the question using db config common, passes the DSN if it already exists, then populates the DBC variables, like uh, there, pass db name type, okay? And then calls dbc go. So that, that function is to be called in, in the pre-inst. And then there's the equivalent for the post-inst that would, will write the file. So it does the opposite way. It takes the DBC information from uh, dbconfig common variables and creates a DSN out of it. So in that SQL connection, so you see Postgres, DB user, pass, etc. So one of the questions that I actually have with respect to this, um, I, I actually at uh, uh, a bug squashing party already a couple of years ago filed a bug against uh, DebConf, where I where we thought it was a we we created the bug together, where we thought that it would be great if um, actually we have a configuration file parser that we could just call and that. Not everybody needs to create his own configuration reading script 
uh, Zigo uses uh, ini files, but of course there are more. Um, because actually the dbconfig common has the problem that actually to circumvent the db dbconf is not a registry issue, it creates an additional configuration file where it stores in its own format the variables that it uses, <coughs> while it also writes a configuration file for your package with the variables in your requested format, which makes sense for your package and makes sense for dbconfig common. But in a way, we created, although it's a configuration file, it is still a sort of registry in that sense, which I think I will not get around, but I think it would be helpful to actually allow a package way easier to provide dbconfig common with all the variables out of its own configuration file so that not everybody has to rewrite that own functionality. I think it should not be in dbconfig common, but if there's no other place, then I think it, would, it could be added to dbconfig common. So what's your idea or opinion on that? I mean, obviously, you're trying to get your any file reader out of that. Who, who would use? Uh, not who here uses dbconfig common in their packages? Can you raise hand? Just one, two, okay. Would you use these kind of functions? Why, why not? So yeah, may, maybe, so I, I don't know. Um. So, so how do you handle that right now? Do you know? So actually, it, it, actually, I don't even remember because it's like, like more than a year ago that I did this, and it basically was quite a breeze. And it, like, thank you for that for just integrating these things. And I know that I write a configuration file with the specific database information for my package. Yes, but I'm not sure I put the information anywhere else. So no, but but still, so yeah. the 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 point in dbconfig common is you need a configuration file. Yeah in your format, and, you need one and we, yeah. we keep a shadowed one. If yeah. the administrator changes, um, actually one of the two, that's all, that uh, UCF will, will notice it and will warn the administrator what's going on, but it's still, um, in that sense, a little bit weird because you may change your uh, configuration file, then you start up dbconfigcommon and it will show you not the value that is in your configuration file, but the one that you had during installation, yeah. if you it's don't properly tell dbconfig.com. Yeah, it's a bug if this happens. It's a it's bug, a bug in, in that package, yes. yes. But I think it, it would be helpful. And actually, I think that I also need to check if all parameters are possible. So I think, I wonder, if, did you ever check that you can change all the variables in your uh, configuration file and see that dbconfig common is actually using your variable. Have you ever it, checked that? It does. All of them? Uh, I, I believe it, my script works. Now, uh, if you put something that has absolutely uh, no logic, I'm not sure what's the result. Yeah, so I, 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 I know by looking at the documentation, at least, of dbconfig common, that it says you can pass these variables from dbconfig common to dbconfig common at this moment in time. So I wonder if there's variables that are stored in your local configuration that could actually get lost this way. So I, I think I actually should check that very uh, carefully. Okay, so if there's no uh, other remarks on that front, um, so um, I create a link here. So in dbconfig common, there's a, a policy file. Oh, um, let me check if I can open it. Um, that says well, uh, a lot of um, uh, input. Um, Basically, what this document describes is what uh, Shin Fenery tried to implement, of course, in dbconfig common. So at the end, it mentions, well, dbconfig common is a framework to actually do this. But this says, this tells things about what a 
administrator can expect from packages that handle databases, uh, such as that uh, uh, on, on how to do the prompting, um, uh, where to in install uh, the database, um, about how to handle failure to do stuff, that you should allow upgrading and removal. Um, and I wonder um, if this is useful to pull this further than where it is now. I mean, it's a document in dbconfig common. It has the status of draft. Um, should I try or we try to get this into uh, Debian policy or an uh, appendix to that document? Or I think it would be useful. Uh, I'm not a great policy writer, so I'm glad that the document is there, but Should I just take it up with the policy team and see what uh, what happens if I do that? And what do people think? Should I ask for a packages should use dbconfig common if there's a database involved, such that we try to make sure that all the bugs end up in the same place instead of all over the place and people inventing wheels? Okay, well, I'll try that then. Okay. What I would love to see happening would be a kind of dev helper thing that would make things fully automated. Uh, I don't know if also I can't contribute that. So, so like, you know, uh, the pre-int, the dot config, the dot post ins, the and the post rm files. You have to write a bunch of things there with UCF. It's not obvious what to do. And it'd be super cool if uh, users would have nothing to write there and it was fully automated from beginning uh, to start. Package maintainers, you mean? Yeah. And you just uh, do a, a DH minus minus with dbconfig common and then it would do the things. Oh, right. That's a good idea. We're also about one minute in time, so something like that. With, with space or with equal? All right. <laughs> yeah, so the, yeah, I, I can think of if there are smart defaults that could be chosen there. Yeah, I can think about that. Okay, well, then we'll uh, just leave it here. Um, always send bugs, wish list items if you have them and find them. Yeah, that makes it just easier to communicate on them and uh, keep track of them. Okay, thank you for your attention.